Tom Greenwood is going to speak to us around about Strike Back and Organise Now. I think I've just thrown that in. Just to, <laughs> Why not? Just to, okay. So Tom, you are very welcome. Uh, yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Tom. Um, yeah, fantastic to be here. Um, I've sat in this room many a times looking the other way and I always swore if it, if it was this side of the table, I'd never do the tech. So, <laughs> I'll do the straw on that one. Um, yeah, so it's right, man, when we were putting this together with Manifesto, it was a real labour of love. And you do ask yourself the question, well, why are we putting together uh, republishing a pamphlet that was written and published in 1917 and it's freely available on Marxist.org. Uh, well, you know, seeing a room full of people tonight, trade unionists, who want to talk about strategy and rank and file strategy is exactly the reason we did it. Um, so it's great to see so many of you here. Um, I'm not going to say too much. I'll, I'll cover sort of three areas quickly. Um, I think, number one, there's real cause for optimism at the moment. The last few years that we've lived through, we all know has been an absolutely massive strike wave um, that hopefully everyone in this room has sort of contributed to in some way. Then I have take a more sober look at the sort of state of trade unionism now and, and then open it up a little bit to hopefully when we speak later about what rank and file strategy should be. So one of the ways we can look um, at how the last few years have been is through the stats that we get via Stripe Map. So when we started the map three years ago, we had 750 uh, strikes submitted. Um, in year two, that grew to 7,000. Um, and then last year alone, we had 230,000 individual work sites in year three. Woo! Woo! Incredibly, incredibly exciting and um, has kept us very, very busy. Um, and along with that, there's been a really sort of renewed interest in the role of the rank and file. Last year there was, and um, apologies if I get any of this wrong, there was the uh, Council Fire Rank and File Conference, there was the Ed Baker Rank and File Conference, the Troublemakers Rank and File Conference, and there was the Workers Summit. Workers Summit, thank you, conference. Um, so there is a real debate in our movement about what the role of the rank and file is and what the sort of flavour of rank and fileism you subscribe to. Now I'm not going to say exactly what I think, I think it's really for everyone to, uh, uh, yeah, getting out of that one. Um, it's really for you know, us to, uh, to discuss this in this room, but publishing things like this, and this is part of an industrial unionism series that we're working on with Manifesto, is to hopefully contribute what we think collectively should be a route forward. Um, but a sort of more sober look at uh, trade union numbers. You know, back in the 70s, it used to be 13 million um, trade union members with the economy covered by 80% collective agreements. 80% of the economy covered by collective agreements. That's dropped to 6.5 million members now, and 20% of the economy roughly covered by collective agreements. So it's a huge amount of work to do. And although there's this, been this amazing strike wave, and uh, you know, again, hopefully we've all been a part of, um, we still managed to lose 200,000 uh, women in the private sector alone, union members last year. So there's a lot, a lot of work to do. I know, you know, just from personal experience, I'm sure everyone knows people like this in their lives who are hugely supportive of trade unions. You know, we might have attended enough as enough rallies or something, but aren't in the trade union themselves and with say phrases like, oh, my union doesn't need work loads. Uh, my wife said that quite a few times, we got made redundant recently, so there you go. Um, you know, we found that out with Shrine Map ourselves recently. We did, uh, was it a survey of our members? And 1,200 of them came back not in the union, supporting Shrine Map and wanting to be involved in the project. And they're not in the union themselves. So there's a potential for great growth, and um, that's really exciting. Um, I'll just end on this thing, because I've been asked to wrap up. Uh, it's our view that, obviously, electing a left-wing bureaucracy is great, but it's not the end of the, end, you know, that's not job done. Um, and so that's why we need to talk about uh, the role of the rank and file, industrial unionism, and everything that hopefully we touch on tonight. I'll leave it there. Thank you.